One of the things that was recognized by the National Institutes of Allergy and Infectious Disease was that there were insufficient numbers of individuals that were capable of studying pathogens in biosafety level three or biosafety level four. In addition to that, there was actually a paucity of space. Now that we've been able to begin to do biosafety level two work in the needle, it allows us the opportunity to begin to get into the biosafety level three and four spaces really kind of test out how things are working to make sure that we are ready if and when we are given permission to do level three and level four work in the facility. There's no secret or classified research that goes into the needle. Everything is fully vetted and everything is fully public. The minutes of all of those deliberations are posted publicly on our website. We're the first university in the country to do this and we continue to be committed to making certain that any research that goes on at Boston University is public knowledge. So Biosafety Level 4 is, is built to a standard of its own. So you'll notice when you go into the facilities, first of all, the number of cameras starts increasing, but you'll also notice layers of entry that you need proximity card readers to get into a space, you need iris scans to get into particular spaces, and all of these are protections to ensure that someone doesn't get into a suite that they're not eligible to get into. In addition, you'll notice that the doors into the facility are built to a totally different standard. Once they're sealed, they are completely sealed off. The rooms are under negative pressure, then they're also sealed from hallways or other rooms within the facility. Because it takes so long for anyone to get into the laboratory, one of the safety features you want is you want to ensure that there's always a second person in the laboratory at the same time. And that way, if there's any type of a problem, there's always a second person on hand to help out. You know, one of the big differences between BSL-3 and BSL-4 is that in addition to removing your protective equipment, that protective equipment is also chemically disinfected. And so there are chemical showers that are built into the exit procedures. In addition to this, there are differences in the way you handle uh, liquid waste. In biosafety level four, once liquid has been inactivated at the sink, it is poured down into what are called cook tanks, which are big holding tanks. Those tanks, once full, then re-disinfect the materials uh, before it is put into the, the water system. Everyone who does level three or level four work knows that the most significant risk is to the investigator themselves. So no investigator takes on the responsibility of working with a level three or a level four pathogen unless one, they are highly trained in the first place, and secondly, that they have paid the utmost attention to safety and security. All of the needle staff have been working closely with Boston Public Health Commission, Boston Fire Department, and other first responders to ensure that all parties have a full understanding of what are the requirements during any type of emergency that could go on in a laboratory facility. The reality is, is that we all know that this institute will not function without an equal part of scientists, safety and security people, our environmental health and safety, our facilities people all being at the top of their game. And so we run this facility as really a collaborative between those groups of individuals. Our well-being and livelihood uh, rests as much on the security personnel and the facilities personnel and the safety personnel as they do on our own ability to carry out the experiments.